How can you manage your high pH soil? Well, the first thing you've got to do is figure out if you have high pH soil. So if you're running composite soil tests, you got to stop. You got to run grid tests or zone tests. And let's find out because even in our own operation, you know, for years we thought, oh, our pH is pretty good. You know, it kind of averages or somewhere around seven. I hear that a lot. Averages around seven. Yeah, it does. But the problem is you got seven, eight or eight, two, and then you've got a five, nine or six, one. Well, both of those are bad. Yes, the average sounds good, but we absolutely have to be addressing those soil pHs, especially once we get above 7.3. Just really quickly, with soil tests, we get a lot of questions about do I need grids, zones. Soil pH is the most important thing that you have to get grid soil sampled out on your farm. Now, the next thing is you've got to have hope because we see so many guys just say, you know what, I've got an 8 pH. That's just how it is around here. I'm not going to do anything about it. And they have no hope. Once you lose hope, you're giving up lots and lots of yield. I would venture to guess you're giving up at least 30% of your yield, and that's what the tests have shown by reputable labs and universities across the country. You're giving up 30% or more of your crop before you even start. And to me, that's a reason that I have lots of hope of, wow, okay, I have this problem, and there's 30% more out there I could have. That's 30% of my bottom line. That would be big for me if I could get it. On 200 bushel corn, if you're getting that now, that's 260 bushel corn you should be getting. Wow, I can do a lot with 60 extra bushels. I can afford to invest some money to try and solve these problems and it will take an investment and a time commitment to solve high pH soils. One thing you got to understand too is every crop has a little different pH range that it thrives in. So crops like barley and sugar beets for example will do better in a little higher soil pH. Alfalfa absolutely has to have a soil pH close to 7. Whereas for corn, soybeans, and wheat the ideal range we're kind of talking about here is 6.3 to 6.8. But never Nevertheless, any crop we're talking about, once you get above that 7.3, 7.5 kind of range, you've got problems, okay? So how are you going to fix that? That's really the key. Well, the first thing that we would tell you is most of the time it's a drainage issue. And that's typically how we've helped farmers fix these high soil pHs around the country. It doesn't happen instantly, but it does happen over a long period of time. Just by improving the drainage, you can lower your soil pH. But please understand, okay, if you've got a 40 cation exchange capacity, in other words, super heavy soil, you can't get by with 100 foot spacings with your drain tile. You probably need 20 or 30 foot spacings with your drain tile. If you've got medium soil, like a lot of the stuff that we would farm, you know, then hey, 50 foot spacing, probably just fine. But you have to have good drainage. That's the whole key. Because the problem is when you don't have good drainage, you have a buildup of salts. You also have a lot less roots there, a lot less soil life there. And all those things will lead to a higher soil pH. All right. Uh, another place where we see high pH soils, I've talked to guys with light sandy soils that are irrigating. And they say, I don't understand it. My soil pH keeps going up. <laughs> and when we look at high pH irrigation water, that can certainly be a way that you keep increasing your problem. And you say, well, I've got got great drainage underneath. Yes, you do, but you keep putting more high pH water over the top. You can certainly treat that water before you put it out on your field to lower that pH and get things in line. Or if you've got some dramatic nutrient imbalance in that water that's coming out of your well or your aquifer where you're at, you can certainly treat for those things too. So talk to your irrigation specialist in your area about what your specific problem is and take a good water quality sample to find out exactly what kind of water you're putting out in your field makes a huge difference. Let's say you have a garden or maybe just a small field that you want to instantaneously lower that soil pH, you absolutely can do it with elemental sulfur. All right, there are formulas out there depending on your cation exchange capacity, in other words, how heavy your ground is, how much organic matter you have, as to how much sulfur you need, elemental sulfur, to immediately bring that soil pH down. Now, that'll be a temporary fix, but you can do it, okay? On a full field basis, you know, we farm 2,700 crop acres. Let's say that we had, and we don't, but let's say we had 1,000 acres of that. I, I'm not going to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in elemental sulfur it's probably not going to pay. But if you wanted to try a little bit of elemental sulfur, let's say 25 or 50 pounds banded over the row, you know, that very well could help. And just in that row to get in the root zone a better soil pH. Okay, another thing with high pH soils, and we do have some of this on our farm, is some very hilly ground that has suffered from soil erosion over a long period of time. There's a field that I picked up a few years back. They, they put some terraces in there in the 1990s. 
uh, and, and even so, I mean, terraces aren't going to stop the erosion, but they're going to, to help a little bit. Uh, but the damage was already done in that field. The hilltops had virtually no topsoil left. Brian gives me a hard time a lot that I'm farming the subsoil, and I really am on those hilltops. And what we see is pH is just going way off the charts. So you may say, well, there, that's not a drainage issue. Uh, kind of it is, uh, in that we let the water run off so fast it took all the soil too. So we do have to deal with that in that kind of situation with reduced tillage, with crops that have a lot of roots, and trying to build up organic matter and soil fertility over a long period of time. So here's what we suggest for those areas. That's where we've got to build new topsoil. And right away you're going to say, wow, I can't build new topsoil. Yes, you absolutely can. Here's how you do it. You reduce tillage, going no-till's best. You use manure, you use cover crops, you use biological products, and then then raise crops with lots of roots. And yes, we all want it to happen instantly, but that's not going to be the case. But over the next 20 years, you absolutely could build new topsoil there, lower the soil pH, and get dramatically more yield. Don't listen to all the naysayers out there that say you can't change a high pH soil. It doesn't cost you a penny to do this. You just reduce your tillage and raise crops that have lots of roots underneath them to help build organic matter. It can be done. It just takes a little bit of time, a little bit of patience, but just look at your soil test results over a three, five, ten year time period, you'll see a marked improvement in your soil's productivity over time. Well, unfortunately, even if you get your soil pH right, that doesn't mean that your weeds are all going to disappear. I sure wish they would. Can you identify this week's Weed of the Week? 